what is a full material disclosure? And what this basically is, is it's a disclosure that's intended to disclose the presence of restricted or reportable substances within the products, parts, or materials you're providing to your customers or to supply chain actors or even to the public. And it's a method that we can use to transfer that kind of information between supply chain actors within different platforms or tools. So I can use it from my database to your database, right? So as I'm moving my products through the supply chain, ideally this information can follow along with that. Now, these are typically provided in support of various environmental compliance requirements, ROHAS, REACH, POPs, TSCA, et cetera. So when we're producing a full material disclosure to provide to our customers, no matter where we are in a supply chain, there's certain elements you're going to want to have in that full material disclosure. You're going to want to disclose the mass of the item you're providing, first of all. You want to provide a list of all the materials present in that declared item and with the mass of each one or the concentration. And you also want to provide a list of all the substances present in each one of those materials with the mass or concentration as well. Now, there might be times where you have to disclose some that are trade secrets, and that's okay. You can just say, well, this is trade secret. I can't give you all the details. I'll just tell you I have a trade secret substance. A lot of times, companies will attach additional information as part of the FMD. Technically not part of the material declaration or disclosure itself because it's not materials, um, but it's relevant information that's associated with that that makes the information you're providing more useful. Examples are compliance status. So in other words, here's the inventory of substances. And by the way, this is compliant with EU ROSE. It's compliant with persistent organic pollutants. It's compliant with the TSCA 6H restrictions, et cetera. Disclose any claimed exemptions for anything that's present over threshold. Right? Claims this ROSE exemption or this ELV exemption or both. Manufacturing specifications are sometimes included for convenience sake. Legal disclaimers on what they can hold you accountable for as you're providing this information. And sometimes even process chemicals, which are actually not present in the product, but might have been used in its production and might be critical for supply chain permanency. Now, what is this actually used for? Well, obviously, if we can transfer that information through the supply chain, then we can aggregate it. So if I'm making a component and I'm receiving material disclosures from the smelters, fabricators, and article providers that are my source, I can take that information and aggregate that up and provide that for the product I'm producing to my customers who may be final product producers or they may not. There could be multiple stages in the supply chain. The idea is, is that at every step, those FMDs can get aggregated and combined and then reported up the chain. And so it evolves up the chain that it goes and you have this traceability. Watch the full-length video and gain access to our full archive of educational webinars at greensofttech.com videos. And while you're there, learn about our premier solutions for environmental regulation compliance.